Uh, hello, I'm Tammy Proctor. I'm on the program committee for the International uh, First World War Studies Society. And we have a virtual conference this year in 2021. So we're doing some interviews with people who have done interesting work in the last few years. Um, I'm Christophe de Klerk. I'm a senior lecturer at University College London. And I'm, I'm, I'm also a lecturer at KU Leuven, which is in Belgium. And as such, I've been commuting between the two countries for a, a long time um, until COVID hit. I'm um, Alison Fell. I'm a professor of French cultural history at the University of Leeds. Um, during the centenary, I ran a project at Leeds called Legacies of War, and I was also in, uh, a co-investigator of a project at Kent called Gateways to the First World War. So I was very involved in centenary activities. Very busy from, from my memory of <laughs> seeing some of the things you were up to. Um, so maybe one of you could just tell me a little bit about how the the Belgian refugee project originated. So it was perhaps um, through some of the activities with Gateways to the First World War and Legacies of War that I um, got to know some historians and lots of museums and community groups who were interested in the uh, Belgian refugees who came to the UK during the First World War. And one of the um, ideas behind the funding that we got was to encourage collaboration between kind of community citizen historians and historians in universities. And I knew there were lots of um, projects happening in the centenary where uh, UK villages and, and cities and areas were recording some of the Belgian 200 250,000 Belgian refugees who were here in the First World War. So towards the end of the centenary period, I applied for some funding to set up a database because we were kind of concerned that some of this fantastic local research would be lost. And so I talked to Christopher about it, who'd already done loads of research and was very involved in um, Belgian refugee, refugee projects. It's, uh, it's amazing how much local research was uh, created during the war and um, all those little local conferences that could have just, you know, ended up in a, in a small library somewhere and never really been collected together. So um, it's, it's a, a good idea, I think. Um, so what, what did the pro project set out to do? What's it accomplished? Um, and where do you think it'll go from here? The, the project started by um, setting up a, a database where a crowdsourced database where people could input any details they had about Belgian refugees during the war. So some people had a little bit of information, some people had a lot. Obviously, the records are quite scattered and not all digitized. And um, so this information isn't currently available anywhere else. So we had a project officer, Philippa Reed, and she set up workshops that Christoph and I went to right across the UK, um, encouraging people to put entries in, talking to different community projects. Um, so that's that's what we accomplished. We've currently got about three and a half thousand names in the database. Well, I, I think one of the important aspects that the project accomplished is that it worked both ways. So it allowed for projects to feed their findings already into the database. So we, we have had contact with people who had a small list of names themselves and they, they collaborated with us. But we also provided the platform for existing local research projects on Belgian refugees to then uh, cascade their findings through the platform or through the, uh, the workshop. And also because of, the, you know, the centenary was just fantastic with social media. Um, so the project really took on and people started, you know, communicating on social media and uh, finding the project through the social media and then started adding data to the database. Yeah, it seems almost an ideal public engagement project. You know, it, when you think about all of the, the studies that are designed to, to engage with the public, this one really does so. Um, and the, another thing I kind of like about it is that I think a lot of times, especially in British histories of the war, Belgium just becomes a landscape, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, and this one really gives uh, the people who are involved agency and, you know, you get a sense of, of what it meant to have refugees from Belgium and Britain for so many years. One question for you, just in terms of the local aspect, uh, were there particular areas of the country where you saw um, either really interesting public engagement with the project or where there were real concentrations of Belgian refugees? 
it was, I mean, it was pretty widespread, which reflects, you know, the reality of where the refugees were. Um, but we did have particular engagements, for example, in Wales. And this was really due to where the local projects had had the most success and enthusiasm. So there are a few kind of champions of Belgian refugee studies around the UK, mm -hmm. some of which Christoph had already been in touch with, some of which came to us during the project. Um, and I think that's reflected in um, where we got a lot of engagement and input of, of data from, from those, those areas. Um, last question, just what's the most important thing you see as a takeaway for World War I scholars from this project? And maybe each of you could, you know, reflect on this a little. What, uh, what would you like people to, to know about um, your experience with this project? I would say two things. So firstly, um, one of the cool things that happened as a result of the project is that it fed into an exhibition in the Imperial War Museum called Forced to Flee that's just finished and that was unfortunately slightly scuppered by COVID, but they still did it digitally and they did eventually open it. And that placed some of the um, Belgian stories side by side with lots of other refugee narratives right through the 20th century. And I found that really fascinating. But I think what I would take, what I took away from it as a historian is some of the more kind of hidden family histories that emerged in the project that wouldn't, even if all the archives are digitized, it wouldn't have got to. So I was particularly interested because a lot of my work has focused on women. I was interested in stories of separation and um, illegitimacy and bigamy of which there were several that came through. Yeah, that's fascinating. Um, I, th I think um, the takeaway is that this, this isn't over. I mean, there's still so much to cover, uh, so much to uncover, and so many people still wanting to contribute, wanting to tell the family story, wanting to help write local history about the First World War from a civilian perspective with a focus on refugees, but also how you accommodate the refugees. And for instance, the, the role of women was so important um, there's lots that we can take away in parallel, but also in just in, in the sheer idea of continuation projects. There's, there's still lots to be covered. The plan is to have a follow-on project so that the database can continue to con uh, exist and that we can focus on specific aspects of the uh, history of the Belgian refugees. Well, again, thank you to both of you and um, everybody should go and check out the project.